Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. As you can probably tell from the title, today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite things in the world, Noragami. For those unfamiliar with the series, I do plan on making a proper review at some point, but for now I'm just discussing the new chapter. I'm not sure if this will be a regular thing, but we'll see. The manga just returned from its hiatus, and of course I ordered the magazine as soon as I could. I just love this cover, they look so precious. If you're interested, Volume 19 of Noragami will actually be released in Japan in August and it will be available in English in December. For this video, I'm going to do things a little differently. I'll first share some general, spoiler-free thoughts on this chapter and where I think things will go from here, so if you're a fan of Noragami and wondering what it's like post hiatus, this might interest you. Afterward, and I'll clearly indicate this, I'll get into some spoilers because boy do I have some things to say. Without further ado, let's get started. To be honest, I don't have much experience following a series that's been on hiatus, so I wasn't sure what to expect. Would things be drastically different, would the quality change, or anything like that? But I had nothing to worry about. This was a great installment, and it had a lot of the same charm as the previous chapters. The art was solid, and it was filled with the same humor we were used to. What I like about Noragami is that it holds itself to a high standard. It knows when to be funny, when to be serious, and when to combine the two. This chapter actually answers a question I've had for a while about a certain character, and at first I thought it was kind of random and out of place, but I think it was necessary to drive the plot forward, because it ends up being one of the things that motivates Yato. My major issue with this chapter was its treatment of one of the main characters, Yukine. The way he was presented seemed to undo some of his previous characterization, and I could let that slide if it was minor, but it was actually pretty central to the chapter, and I'll touch on this more later. I've thought about this for a while now, but it seems as though the series is moving towards its final arc, or at least building it up right now. Yato has always been the center of Noragami, and as of now, it seems as though there's only one thing that's standing in his way of him achieving his goals. And I thought it would be weird to push off dealing with this, especially given the last arc. It seems like this is the natural course for the series to take, and this chapter seemed like a proper and good segue into what I imagine is its next major story arc. I'm both super excited and super terrified because I don't want anything bad to happen to these major characters. And those are my spoiler-free thoughts on this month's chapter of Noragami. Going forward, I will be sharing spoilers from the chapter, and if that's what you're interested in, those are coming up right now. First off, what caught me off guard the most was Yukine and his reaction to Nora's kiss. I'm sure this issue isn't going away soon, but I thought it was a weird inclusion. Yukine's character arc depicts him as a Shinki who wants to protect Yato at all costs, and not only that, throughout the entire series, Nora has done nothing but torment him and try to kill him, so it seems weird that he'd even dwell on this in the first place. It's also kind of interesting that before, ablutions seemed like very hard, very emotional and toiling processes, but this ablution went by really quickly. So I guess it really wasn't a big deal in the long run anyway, both symbolically and literally, but it still felt unlike him, especially when he's probably aware that this puts him at a disadvantage in a fight against Nora. And I guess that's why Nora even did it in the first place, but maybe this is just a remnant of his trauma from before that's clouding his judgement. It's also interesting that Nora did this without her father knowing, and I think she thought she was being clever. But as we see later on, this doesn't phase Yato at all because he wants to bring a new Shinki with him anyway. So he's got a backup plan, even if it's not ideal. We already know Nora doesn't understand Yato as well as she thinks he does, and neither does their father. I think it's interesting that Yato went to visit the heavens again, and it's not revealed why, but I'm guessing he wanted to strike some kind of deal. Maybe it's some sort of promise to keep his friends safe, or maybe he asked guidance and actually did tell them about his plans. We've seen that he has way more sway among the gods than he realizes, so I wouldn't be surprised. Of course, the major feels of this chapter, Yato finally feels motivated to take on his father. After speaking with Takemi Kazuchi, Yato mentions that this is yet another god who is embroiled in his father's shenanigans, yet another entity dragged into this, and he feels responsible yet again, so he decides to take matters into his own hands. I think it's interesting that he pushed it off in the first place. He's obviously worried about whether or not he can reincarnate. If he reincarnates, will he be the same monster that his dad raised? There's a tinge of finality in all of this, and maybe that's why he wanted to enjoy what he had for as long as he could. Because of Yukine's mental state, he can't be used against Nora, and Yato has to find a new Shinki. I think he's either going to use Kazuma, who's mysteriously gone missing, or Nana. 
I know it's important for Yato to have his confrontation on his own, but I wonder if it'll be more of the same since we just saw Bishamon try to fight his father by herself. Granted, Yato probably won't have heaven on his tail this time, but I'm wondering what kind of journey this will be for him. It's also kind of sad that Yato wants to do this on his own since he's always been shouldering things on his own in the first place, so I think it would almost make more sense to have some support from his friends. Things do seem to be moving quickly, but I don't think Yato is just going to brawl in the next chapter. This will probably be built up over some time. Lastly, my dear Hiyori, she hasn't been that crucial to the plot lately, but I think her interaction with Yato is going to be what moves her to change as well. Maybe she'll round up the other gods, or snap Yukine out of a slump, or find Yato, but I hope to see her in the spotlight in the future. Overall, this chapter does what all Noragami chapters do best, and that's leave me wanting more. Thankfully, the next chapter is only a few weeks away, and I hope my magazine arrives earlier this time. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Life is, it's just always mysterious.